made my first experience with art. My mother and dad, who could not afford it, sent me to a uh, school where the, where the nuns were teaching it, and I had to take two buses to go all the way downtown in Milwaukee at, how old are you in fourth grade, 10 years old? And I went every Saturday morning and they had to pay a dollar for each lesson, so you could tell that was back in the 40s. I've always been a drawer, and my mom and dad fostered that because my mother was also very artistic. In fact, those are her paintings over there. This is Tom. He's my support system mostly. Everything I make, I, I show him, he'll say, oh, that's really neat, but that's his favorite work. But he has helped me by building my work table, and he built it according to my specifications. We covered each one of these with the canvas, and it's a heavy grade canvas because you do a lot of smoothing of the clay on the canvas, and the canvas absorbs some of the moisture in the clay so you can work better with it. I think I started making pumpkins because it was Halloween, and I had some friends that really are into Halloween, and I thought, well, they would enjoy a pumpkin, so I thought, well, I'll make some small pumpkins. What I take to build the pumpkins is, these are all paper toweling that have been used on many pumpkins, and I just wad it up and put it inside my clay and build my clay up around it. And the reason I use this old tissue is because it's all in pieces, so when I cut the hole on the bottom of the pumpkin, I can pull it out. If it was whole, it would pull and spread the opening too wide. This way, it just pulls out in pieces and I can reuse it 100 times if I want. I always took art during high school. That was always one of my classes. And after high school, went to college for two years as an art major. And because it was back in the 50s, Tom and I decided that we wanted to get married and I went to an all-girls Catholic high school and you could not be married and go to school. So I quit school and continued to be a housewife, raise six children. And when my children were probably about, I think my youngest was in eighth grade, I went back to school, but this time I went back and became a nurse. I was a nurse for 14 years and then Tom and I retired out here to Arizona and I decided that I needed a, an artistic outlet and clay class was being offered at the Mesa Art Center and a bunch of ladies out here decided that they all wanted to go and they asked me if I wanted to go and I said sure I'll go and I was the only one that continued with the class the rest of them all dropped out <laughs> and then when the Mesa Art Center closed down because they were redoing the building I went to Chandler Gilbert and I've stayed there ever since. I do enjoy the camaraderie and it gets me out of the house. <laughs> Until I get the actual pumpkin formed, I don't really know where the surface of the face is going to be. And I look for the part where it kind of pushes out a little bit and I build that up and then I usually put like some clay at the chin part so that I got some extra clay there. I just have to make a different face every time because I can't remember what I made the time before, so it turns out differently every time. You're always trying to improve what you've already done. So you're always working on something that's different and maybe tweaking it just a little bit, say, oh, this worked good. Well, maybe if I do this, it'll work even better. And then sometimes, yes, sometimes no. So you know what you're going to do and the next time you're going to go back to the original way or you're going to say, oh, I like the way that happened. And I did that with a lot of my pieces that I used to build. I built all those chickens that I used to make and every single one turned out differently and I kept improving on my ability to make them and faster. I was getting better. All right. Some of the tools I've used in creating the pumpkin are dental tools. Always use my dental tools. They have different uh, heads on them and I use both sides for something. I never know what I need in the dental tools. These rubber tipped line drawers, I, I don't know what else to call them. They're, they're very useful. 
and they come in different sizes. I have probably three or four different sizes, and they're all about the same type of uh, points on them. And they're very, very useful in sculpting. Those are my favorite tools. And I use them for the, for the chickens I make just as well as I do for the uh, pumpkins. He who has the most tools wins. That's an old pottery statement. And I think I have pretty many tools, so maybe I'll win. <laughs> and this is my brush I use for smoothing out the clay. Many times I have to smooth out the clay because it's a little rough and my fingers don't always smooth it out real much, but the brush does a good job. So. I was originally a painter. I did a lot of painting and I did uh, pastel chalk and I thought why can't I use clay as my palette and that's why I do so many painterly things on clay. I don't sculpt as much as I paint but I have learned to do better sculpting. I wasn't that good in the beginning and I have a piece in my bathroom to prove that. <laughs> What's really nice during the summertime is clay like this will dry within a day and a half, whereas in the wintertime, it might take up to a week to dry. Once it was dry enough to the touch, I was able to glaze with the velvet glazes that I use, and once it's completely dry, it'll be very warm. Now I let this sit for another night, and then it goes into the, the second firing, which is with the on gold on it. The last firing will be cone five. And the pumpkins that I've got loaded already have to be loaded in a way that they don't touch anything. They can't touch each other because if they did, they would stick together. These shelves are, they have a, a coating of, of a substance called kiln wash. And kiln wash prevents the clay from sticking to it. I have to be pretty creative sometimes with how I load the kiln. These are the hats that go on the witches and the, and the guys. Then I've got everything loaded and the cover will come down. I start on very low and then I go to a four and then I go to high. It'll be cone five. They don't come out for a day. It's about 2,300 degrees by the time they're finished. So the next day, I can take them out and I watch my pyrometer, which is this dial over here. And when it gets down to like about 300 degrees, I can lift up, open the cover and let them air dry. Uh, if you open up too soon, you could get crazing or cracking of the glaze. When they're done, they're done. And I take them out. Because my things are whimsical, I use embellishments. And glasses on the pumpkins are one of my embellishments. I have different glasses I make, and I make a lot of them with round sticks, square sticks, and things like that. And when the pumpkin is completely finished, I take a little bit of my E6000 glue, which is a good clay glue, and I glue the glasses to the pumpkin so they don't come off. Rule of thumb, and I learned this right in the beginning when I first started working with clay, don't like it until it's done. <laughs> because so often you get real excited about a piece and then it would break and then you'd feel awful, but there's nothing you could do about it. You look at it and you go, oh well, I can make another one. <laughs> My artwork is not on any media site, which is because I'm not very media savvy anyway and I don't do Facebook or any of the other social media things. And Tom and I don't know how to do that anyway. <laughs> we get by mostly with just word of mouth. A lot of my friends know about it, and also Sibley's, where I have most of my work, will be able to give anybody my information, or they will call me and ask me if I can do anything for somebody. And that's how we get the word around. She's the queen of channel now. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that. My, I'm the clay queen, he says.